No, never play games with the devil. Ever, ever, ever. Hey guys, it's your girl Laisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to The Legend of Vox Machina. We're now on season three, episode four, which is called Hell to Pay. And that's a great segue into what happened in the last episode. We had half of our team head into the depths of hell in order to get another one of the vestiges that they think they absolutely need in order to go up against Thordak. And the other half were fighting off the ice dragon because they were betrayed by a scorned lover. So they did manage to uh, escape this dragon on the outside, but there is still the time, the, the, the clock is ticking for them to get back to this door to hell because if they don't get back there in time then the other half of the team will be trapped there indefinitely and um yeah we haven't really seen where the team is getting it oh sorry the team in hell got to the city of dis <laughs> dis is a rock sorry <laughs> they managed to get just there when we ended the last episode so a lot more shenanigans to ensue. Let's jump in. But just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know when I drop these episodes, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. All right, that out of the way. Let's get into the episode right now. All right, she couldn't Everlight. reach the Everlight because she's in hell. <laughs> Everlight, it's me. Everlight's like, I, I don't answer calls from hell, madam. I am a holy creature. The hells of Despath are forbidden. Mm -hmm. But why? If Excuse we me? find Xerxes, we'll You're look not allowed to ask screen. gods why. There are those in hell who would use it for wicked aims. Ooh. And you will find yourself alone. I mean, that's really not her realm, sis. Oh. Oh. <gasps> How about no to whatever that was? You got us got our backs? Yeah. Sure does. Lies! But at this point, I guess they don't need any... We're gonna Bad need news. all kinds of miracles. What are you talking about? I feel like you guys are underestimating the uh, the benefits. Think of how toasty you're gonna feel, the tan you might pick up, maybe get a nice sexy set of horns. I don't know, just potential is all I'm saying. Okay, maybe the screeching constantly would be a bit annoying. And the wailing, the general misery. Just in time for that season. Oh, fuck yes. Bigger antlers. <laughs> Are you okay? Those souls. Heck looks like a Wookiee. Is going through hell worth it for one vestige? Well, we're already here now. Hell ain't such a bad place. But... I mean, lots of people have told me to go in. <laughs> forgive me. I mean, the Everline made it clear forgiveness is not what she's asking for. She warned you that you're vulnerable down there, so good luck, girl. Hi. Lovely eyes you have. All 16 of them. <laughs> Even Vax is like, nope, I'm not getting that far. Oh, that was gross. Yeah. You smell different. I oh, uh, we haven't bathed oh, in a few things. The opposite. We're looking for someone named Xerxes. Oh. Well, at least Team Draconia is having a nice quiet time in the snow. Are they? Are they really? Define quiet. As in death quiet? Deathly quiet? Yeah. I'm going to tear that fucking dragon to pieces. Ooh, we like revenge. I'm, I'm up, I'm up. You guys keep searching. It's fine. I'll, I'll be okay. Drives me nuts. Right out. After everything this group has been through, we, we're still keeping secrets? All oh, this evil. Maybe the Everlight was right. Maybe. We shouldn't be here. She said you specifically, actually. <laughs> no, no to investigate. No, okay. I only want to help. Don't use Please your power down here. Redeem this woman with your healing light. There's no redemption in hell. <laughs> Pike, you just don't listen. Fresh <laughs> blood. Pike, Pike, Pike. Gotta move, Pike. 
I almost want Pike to get a little bit of a nibble just so she learns to listen. I get it. I know it's in her nature to help, but I'm just saying like the Everlight, the Everlight told her girl, keep it to yourself. That scene though, the slow-mo. That is helpful. That is a very helpful trick. You look terrible, but I must say, that was kind of hot. We have to shut the door. What Maybe is this place? Okay. I'd urge caution before uttering further names. You were the presence I felt. Yeah, I didn't share that with the class though. Every decade or so, Jamon comes to test their rather poor luck at my table. They shouldn't have wagered such an artifact, but fair's fair. That lying. You'd have to make an exquisite offer. Or wager. Care for a game of chance. No, never play games with the devil. Ever, ever, ever. And if I win, you stay as my guest. Forever. Indefinitely. Mm. No cheating allowed. That doesn't mean he can't do okay. things to be deceitful. What's the game? The floor is lava? Contract? Yeah. To All right, Pike. If you do become the devil's pawn, that means it was what meant to be, because you were warned. Like I said, we have rules down here. Damn. Whose voice? They I know the voice of this devil guy. In this bitch. <laughs> Your redeemer isn't here, is she? That wasn't my question. Yeah, and that wasn't part of the game. After all. Everyone has a tell. Like you squinting your if eyes. If you dig deep enough. Mm, so he's gonna get you all messed up by talking about the Everlight. My God betrayed me. As yours will too. No. You do know the devil's a liar. Second from your left. No. This is why you don't play games with the devil. Oh, stupid, comfortable chair. <laughs> comfortable with the spikes. You are now bound to the sanctum and the service of the fallen knight for eternity. eternity. Yeah, hope that was worth it. I will require something more substantial. The souls of your friends. Hmm. Fine. One round, winner takes all. Uh. Uh. Oh, wait, excuse uh, me, Pike. I think that's not a decision you get to make for us. I feel like we're not friends after this, to be perfectly honest. Even if she wins, I'm like, I'm never trusting you again, respectfully. Have you ever wondered if the Everlight needs you more than you need her? This has you nothing to do with my, my cards. Which card is your black skull? Interesting approach. Right. Since I cannot lie, I'll tell you. It's the one in my hand. <laughs> Sorry, but I told you. I told you, Pike. He doesn't have to lie to be deceitful. Doesn't sound very faithful to me. Yeah, Your left faith guard. is never 100% all the time. I think I deserve to know who you are. Very well. Treat this as a last indulgence. Well played, Pike. There's one thing narcissists love is to talk about themselves. I was blind as my friends condemned our civilization with their curiosity, their hubris. Your viewpoint? Lord of Torment himself. Huh. But instead of destroying me. I love this artwork. Die with the rest, or join him. Oh, so you're a coward. I watched my husband and son fade with the rigors of time. Never existed at all. You trusted a betrayer? Pike? No difference between the gods above and below. They all lied! Oh, so you're saying you lied. Thanks. Do you wish your family was here? Right? What? Since you love them so much. You say you loved them, but all I hear is regret. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh? Answer my question. Do you wish they were here, suffering with you? Hmm. Of course not! You not liar! Here. And now my choice is a lot simpler. Oh, thank you for your tell. That one. Good job, Pikey! Although I'm still not trusting you. You gambled with my life, girl. Mm -mm. Well played, Pike Trickfoot. Tricks in the name. I accept defeat. Do you? Ooh, she's shiny. 
Who's that for, Pike? That looks like a Pike relic. As soon as I saw how bright it was shining. Holy Pike, it's a souvenir. <clears throat> Dog, you have yours. Here, take this. It bears my mark. You'll need it to get safely through Death's Path. Yank, show them the door. Yank? Is that a better name? She has no idea what courses through her veins. Leave her. Kill the rest. We are his blood. The time for his ascension draws near. Huh? What's in her blood? What are the chances that isn't for us? Why are you stopped? I hate masks. Yeah, me too. Me too. But that's what you get. Why are you still standing there? I'm sorry. I hear that noise and I'm running faster. Because y'all are literally in hell. So you're just like, let me just chill. Look. See if we can figure. No. Let's run. Running first. Thinking later. All right. Another good episode. Uh, we're kind of going back to Pike. We know a lot of season. Well, yeah. Parts of season one and season two were all about Pike and her faith and her relationship with her faith and what that meant as far as where she should go with her belief system and I personally feel like, I mean, the great thing with belief is that it really is about interpretation for each person who is a believer. Obviously, if you are in a structured religion of some kind, there are rules, there are things to follow, there are tenets, there are commandments in some cases. But in the end, each person, because we're all individual, we are going to take it and see it in our own way based on so many factors. And so anyways, I kind of took from the Everlight's conversation with Pike that conversation that Xerxes referred to was basically telling Pike that in the end, if she could still believe in the ever light and in the power of light, but whatever she chose, she should do it because she fully wanted to do that. And because it was truly what she believed to be her path, as in she was being her authentic self while following it. Right. And she basically said that, you know, the ever light will be there as long as there's belief. It just depends, you know, what path you take is up to you. And many religions, not all, but many religions have a similar belief system in the sense of whatever that higher power is will love and be there for you, but it's not going to dictate to you who you're supposed to be, if that makes sense. So anyway, I think that, you know, Pike has been struggling with that. We know that she's always kind of thought that in order to be a true servant of the Everlight, she should be a certain way as in super pure and and never partaking in certain activities and always kind of dedicating every waking moment to her devotion and that's not really her that's not who she wants to be as she said with the Everlad I like to drink I like to swear I like to party I like to fight I like to do a lot of things that in her mind and her construct of what belief means it doesn't fit in there nicely and so she still even though the Everlad gave her that that speech in the last the last time they spoke around, you know, it doesn't really matter. It looks like Pike is still struggling with that or thinking that maybe she still is not worthy in some respect. And that does also often come a lot with belief systems as well of, of wondering if we live up to what it is that whatever it is that we are devoting ourselves to, serving, worshiping, whatever the case may be, like, are we actually living up to what's required? And so now with her going down into the hells, I mean, again, the Everlight, I wouldn't say is necessarily heaven, but a lot of the imagery that they paint around that definitely feels like it's supposed to be a likeness to heaven. So Pike going to the absolute opposite of that, it makes sense that her connection with the Everlight was muted, if, if anything. I wouldn't say it was completely severed, but definitely muted. And we see that when she meditated, the Everlight said, listen, sis, that's not our domain. Like, me, the Everlight, what we do, what we, it's up here. It's up in, you know, it's on earth. It's above. It is not in the place of the damned because that's, that's not our realm. And she said a couple pointed things to Pike, which was A, there's no redemption in hell. And B, that's not where, you know, so there are people down there that would use what you have for ill ends, right? Those are the two things I really, really heard. And she basically said, if you keep going down a certain path, I can't follow you, right? So we see that Pike questioned. She said, why? Like, mostly to the, why can't the people in the hells be redeemed? And that could be where there is that seed of doubt that Xerxes was talking about. Because Pike obviously didn't like that answer. She hated seeing people suffering. And as I said in the episode, it's, it's part of who she is. She likes to try to help people. It's in her nature. But... <sighs> I mean, without getting too deep into it, there's definitely some some discussion around like, is it just a situation of like, there are rules at play that, you know, if you've done certain things and you are damned to the hells, like you've already made your decisions and that's where you are versus the Everlight just doesn't want to be bothered with it or the Everlight is 
of the mindset that it doesn't matter if you've done certain things, you just don't get redemption. You know, you get what I'm saying? And that's very understandable if Pike feels like maybe there are people that have suffered enough or after a certain point of suffering, they should be given the option to be redeemed, if that makes sense. It's kind of like prison, right? Like not everyone who goes to prison should stay there forever. Maybe there are people who go and they genuinely reform and are ready to come back into society. So anyway, I'm thinking that's kind of where things are kind of being placed as far as doubt. And also I feel like Pike is of the mindset that why isn't the Everlight really with me no matter what? Like you told me to walk in my truth, but when I came down here, when I walked someplace that you didn't want, you abandoned me. So does that really mean that like, were you telling the truth or do I actually, do I really have to path or follow a path that you set out for me, right? So it's an interesting, you know, thought process around belief and what that means. And uh, the fact that we're revisiting it again with, with Pike is very interesting, but we see that when they were down there, they met Xerxes who called out to Pike, sensed Pike the second she got in there. I mean, obviously he would have sensed when all of them came in, but Pike was the person he cared about. And we discovered that the reason is because there's something in her blood. Now the Everlight clearly referred to that as well, but didn't get as specific. Basically just said that there's, that you were somebody that could be used, but Xerxes must have sensed this. We see that they played the game and Pike lost initially because, well, you know, understandable, you're playing against a deceiver, but then we see in the second one when she realized that this was not just a straightforward game of cards, that there was going to be manipulation involved and emotional upheaval. She thankfully, it was a quick study, and she was able to turn it back around on Xerxes by getting him to talk about himself, which very, that's a very much a holy person move, right? Confess to me so that I might find what I can use to, to use against you. <laughs> But anyways, a uh, really interesting story about Xerxes and the fact that he was uh, there before the world turned into what it is now and that he's carrying a grudge because he feels as though he should have been spared all those, I don't know how long ago it was, but he feels like he should have been spared and that the hubris of his teammates, which he blames for this situation, which I'm pretty sure if we could talk to them, they probably have a different story. But anyways, he feels like his gods or whoever was supposed to be you know, he was in the fighting in the name of, he felt like they should have kept him from the fate that he ended up with of basically dying or choosing to be in hell, which I mean, I would, if Pike didn't need to get the heck out of there, I would have ventured, she should have asked, well, why did you choose that? Like, yeah, death sucks, but at least you would have been at peace, right? Your family, he said you take out your family, but honestly, if they ended up being killed too, like they would be at peace too. Like there's nothing, once death happens, that's it, right? If your family was innocent and good, they would have ended up in heaven or wherever else that is that you believe that they go, or they would have just been gone. But you get my point. He made a very selfish decision, even though, yes, it was in the idea of sparing his family. He had no guarantees that this devil was going to keep its, its word, right? So... In the end, he just didn't want to die. And he made a very selfish decision in that moment, which I understand. But of course he's twisted it to make it seem like it was all whoever's fault and his team's fault. And no, everyone's to blame except for him for making the choice to be suffering for eternity. So anyways, uh, very interesting. And I really love how Pike turned that around and managed to get him to give up his tell because he was so emotionally shooken, or shaken sorry, by her question about his family, something that I think is obviously still a sore spot for him that he finally gave up and, and gave his tell. So anyway, it's good for Pike for getting them out of it. But as I said in the episode, uh, we'd have to have a little talk. Don't you dare gamble with my soul, sis. We didn't even want to play this game with this guy. You were the one who decided to do this, but it worked out in the end. And obviously Pike needed the vestige. So now she has hers. And it was interesting because Xerxes' face when she, when the vestment chose her, he did not look impressed. I don't know if it's because he didn't know it would do that or what, but it turns out there's something in her blood, as he claims, that um, he clearly wants. And I'm guessing it's because whoever the guy who actually runs Hells is, they probably want what she has or he wants it, one or the other. At this point, I'm not sure if he's still, he said so-and-so is rising, right? He's like, he's, his time is coming. We're going to arise or something like that. So... I don't know if he's still helping out the, the original deceiver or if he's got his own plans to break free, but either way, Pike has become important and he does not want her leaving. And he's very mad that he lost that game because it should have been an open and close situation. So anyway, Fox Machina now has to fight their way out, at least to get back to their portal. And on the outside, which we didn't see any of, we know that the team has to find a way to get back to that portal to open it up for them. Otherwise it won't matter if they make it back. So the plot continues to thicken and we love it. So yes, another great episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.